Hey, what's up guys? Phoenix here, and this video is going to be another Yu-Gi-Oh! deck profile video, and this time is going to be an updated Crusadia Guard Dragon deck profile for Post-Rising Rampage and for the August 2019 format. Now, this deck is in a very weird place, because while it did gain some additional cards to be utilized in certain combo sequencing, like Ranryu out of Rising Rampage that assisted the deck, the deck did get hurt by the most recent Forbidden and Limited list in a very significant way. Both Black and White Dragon being limited to one each is a very large hit to this deck because it actually helped the deck a lot in its late stages of its combos because of the fact that they were both extenders and free cards that were generating more cards from themselves that actually just made the combos flow a lot better. So now we don't have access to that, but we did gain cards to replace what we lost in the form of Ranryu, which we were going to be playing Ranryu anyway, but unfortunately we ended up losing additional copies of Black and White Dragon Collapse Serpent. So this deck is in a very weird place. I don't think that it's nearly as competitive or like rogue potential as it used to be, uh, and I definitely don't know how this deck stacks up once Rockets come out. The Rocket Structure deck probably just does everything this deck does but better. But anyway, this is the list that I've been testing, and I have been having the most success with. It has the most, you know, amount of, like, reasonable theory poured into it, and so I figured I would share it with you guys before I probably never actually touch this deck again, unless, for some reason, something really good comes out that's capable of making this deck play a completely different way than it currently does. But basically, that's the gist of it. But before I get into the deck profile, I'd like to ask that if you're new here and like what you see, maybe hit that subscribe button, maybe enable notifications so you don't miss a future upload. I try to be, uh, I try to be consistent, but it usually doesn't work out that well, but we're going to be trying harder this time. And uh, if you want to see more stuff, the channel has a big enough backlog of videos on this deck as well, if you're interested. But anyway... Deck list is 40 cards, which is uh, pretty rare for me, actually. Usually I end up getting this deck up to like 43, 45 cards, but I've actually been able to keep it at a concise 40 based off what I wanted to cut and, you know, card concessions that I've made uh, in order to keep it, you know, as good as I could keep it. But anyway, starting with the Crusadia lineup, three copies of Crusadia Draco. This is your, like, staple card that makes the deck function into its Crusadia engine and its Guard Dragon engine, so, like, this is obviously a three of. Three copies of Crusadia Maximus. Uh, this is good for when you do end up going second in sided games or in game ones. You're usually able to make big Equimax and punch them. But otherwise, it's still very useful for the way this deck plays because it is a level 4. Because this deck is focused around as many level 4 extenders as possible to make Magius and then summon Azathoth so your opponent can't use monster-based hand traps against you. And then you're capable of full comboing with only really fearing infinite impermanence. Uh, so, like, this card is still super good as a combo piece, so I wouldn't, you know, cut down on any quantities of it. Three copies of Crusadia Arborea. Uh, it being a tuner comes up in the end stages of certain combos. Uh, it being a level 3 really sucks, though. I wish that more of the Crusadias were level 4, so that I could actually, you know, branch out on some of the theories that I have with this deck. Three copies of Crusadia Reclusia. This is actually, like, one of my favorites, if not my favorite Crusadia, because the fact that it is a usable piece of removal at any point during any sort of game state... Uh, and you're capable of recycling it with Draco. So, like, the grind games with this deck can get very intricate, especially with the other cards that I'm playing that you will see later. But those are the, those of you that are, like, used to my channel's content will actually know what cards are about to be coming up. Uh, but Crusadia Reclusia is really good in, like, slow grinding games because you can usually, like, you know, play advantage games with Draco and Reclusia, and the way Arborea interacts with Reclus uh, Reclusia as well is, uh, is kind of interesting. So, overall, like... This card, big fan of it. <laughs> really big fan. And what may seem weird is I'm actually only playing one copy of Crusadia Leonis. Uh, I wanted to play more copies of Crusadias, obviously, and I was originally playing three of this card, but that put the deck at over 40 cards, was making me see cards that I wanted to see more often, less often, like cards like Wind Conditions, like Kyoto Waterfront, and stuff like that. I didn't like drawing multiples of it, and I don't like drawing multiples of any of the level 3 Crusadias to begin with, because they're not level 4s to, you know, funnel into the regular theory. So if I ever opened, like, a level 4 extender and then two level 3 Crusadias, I'm actually not very pleased because it means that I can't go into Nyarlia and Azathoth because I have a level 3 and a level 4 spare. And also this card just doesn't do anything. It's the one that makes your monster pierce. So, like, it, it's, it's not even that, like, impactful. And the numbers actually are fine for this. Uh, I was on the fence on cutting down on Crusadia names, I am still playing the Reinforcement of the Army for Arborea, so effectively I'm playing 12 Crusadia names, the Leonis is the 13th, and then the Rhoda for Arborea is the 14th Crusadia name. Now, if I was playing the Leonises in a deck that's more than 40 cards, 
I would have a 91.61% chance of opening at least one Crusadia. But if I bring the deck down to 40 cards and only play the one Leonis and have a 14 card Crusadia count, that still like that only drops my chances of drawing a Crusadia by 1.6%, and I have a flat 90% across the board rate of drawing at least one Crusadia. So it's just it's fine having it at one because I wanted to bring the deck count down, and the percentages overall are not affected that heavily because of how many Crusadias there are. And this is by far the weakest one because it's the one that doesn't yield any sort of advantageous play and isn't the right level. So that's why there's only one Leonis. Uh, you could up count on this, obviously, if you want to go above 40. But like I said, you're only getting a small amount of consistency boost on the amount of Crusadias that you're going to be drawing. Physically playing the other two copies of Leonis and going to a 42 card deck still only lets you have a 91.61% chance of opening a Crusadia, so you only gain 1.6%, and you lower the chances of drawing your other impactful cards like Kyoto Waterfront and stuff by more percentages that you don't want to have. Like, if I could play Upstart in this deck, I would, but uh, I can't really find something else to cut. But anyway, carrying on, playing a lot of level 4 extenders that work with Magius. Uh, three copies of Gigabyte. Uh, because, you know, you summon Crusadia Magius with any Crusadia, and it's a spellcaster, and Gigabyte and all the other familiar possessed, uh, like, familiar monsters I'm about to show you, they get to be special summoned if you control a spellcaster. So Magius is a spellcaster, so every Crusadia becomes Magius, and then you're capable of just special summoning as many of these that you have in your hand. And then Maximus also plays into that because it's a level 4 monster. And then you also have cards like Quick Launch, which summon a level 4 rocket from our deck, which are also other level 4s. We're basically trying to make Magius, make Nyarlia, put as a thought on top of it, your opponent can't use monster effects for the turn, and then Magius searches your Draco and you do full combo, right? Uh, you can only control one of these, of the same name, but that's fine because you overlay into Nyarlia while you still have the Magius up so you can special summon more of them. You can have two Gigabytes, summon one, summon another card, overlay into Nyarlia, special the second gigabyte from your hand because you now no longer control gigabyte it's it's pretty easy it's pretty nice it's pretty nice and easy but carrying on we're actually playing 10 of these things uh three gigabytes two nefarious archfiend eater of nefariousnesses uh two inari fires and then three of the newest addition to the familiar lineup uh three ranryu and this is the one you definitely want to be playing even if you're not playing any of the rest of them you definitely won't be playing this because it is a wind dragon effect monster that can be special summoned while you control magius so it's an extender uh, it's an extender in the purest form. It's a dragon, which is very necessary uh, for what the deck lost. And this is one of those cards where, like, if you open a Crusadia plus, like, Ranryu, Ranryu, Gigabyte, you special Ranryu, Gigabyte, under the Magius, make Nyarla, make Azathoth, your opponent can't do monster effects anymore, and then you special another Ranryu from your hand, and you just leave it over on the side to be your dragon extender for the rest of your combo. So it sort of tries to assist you in making up for where you're lacking with the loss of the extra copies of the white and black dragons. Uh, it's also just a card that you can draw off Saryuja. You can Saryuja special it to be your dragon extender um, to go into Pisty and finish out the rest of the combo. Uh, there's a lot of good things about this card. And these cards are really good in the grind game as, uh, as well. If you end up in a very slow-paced grind game like in a, against a deck like Salad, you have a lot of these cards that just float. Uh, like Ranryu, when it's destroyed, you summon one of your other familiars from Grave. Gigabyte summons from deck. And Nari Fire, if it's in the graveyard during your standby phase, the turn after it was destroyed by a card effect, it special summons itself. Archfiend Eater destroys a card you control during the end phase of your opponent's turn to special summon itself. So there's a little loop between a Nari Fire and Archfiend Eater where you can Archfiend Eater destroy a Nari Fire, summon Archfiend Eater, and then next standby phase, a Nari Fire comes back. Like, it's really good for little grind game scenarios uh, because these cards are floaters um, in terms of Ran Ryu and Gigabyte being floaters, and then the uh, Inari Fire and uh, Archfiend Eater actually being able to do some like weird play to gain advantage uh, based off how your opponent is allowing you to play. But still, 100% play Ranryu, but I'm playing all these cards because these cards are effectively more special summons, and like I said, we're trying to make Outer Entity Nyarla into Azathoth so that our opponent can't hand trap us on our combo. But anyway, carrying on with uh, more Dragon Extenders, the one copy of White Dragon, one copy of Black Dragon, you still have to play these cards, they're still way too good. Uh, because they still are a one card double extender because you can summon one, make Pisty, search the other one, that finishes out that stage of the combo, so it's still very good. Uh, and then the one copy of Darkness Metal Dragon to summon off your LP because this is what allows the deck to function in the way that it does. And then we have a brick in the form of Magna Rocket Dragon, which we are playing for our quick launches. 
And then we have Gamma Seal the Sea Turtle Kaiju because we are definitely playing Kyoto Waterfront in this deck. No reason why we wouldn't be. Uh, it's the most reliable win condition this deck has right now is to play Waterfront and try to get to Gamma Seal, try to draw it off your Saryujas, which is another reason why I tried to keep the deck down to 40 cards instead of going above because we did lose a copy of Terraforming. So even with playing four Waterfronts, your chances of drawing it are still lowered than what they would have been like last format because you could have potentially played five. Uh, and I'm trying to keep my deck count as low as possible so that I can get access to my waterfront more reasonably. But that is all the monsters the deck has in it. I'm not maining any hand traps. Into the spells, I'm playing three copies of Kyoto Waterfront. Uh, like I said, I'm playing all four copies of it. So I'm playing three copies of Kyoto Waterfront and the one copy of Terraforming. Uh, I would definitely play the second Terraforming if we still had two. <laughs> if we still had two terraformings, I would still play it. Uh, this deck doesn't have to play like bricks, like Call by the Grave and stuff like that that don't contribute to your combo because we're trying to go for the Azathoth route, which means that we're playing a lot of monster-based ex extenders. So our plays and our hands are usually always very fluid and always very much the same in terms of how they function. So you can get away with drawing multiple waterfronts because the rest of your hand is usually Crusadia plus two monsters that can be special summoned when Magius is out, whether they're Crusadia names or familiars. So... Waterfront, this is like the most reliable win condition this deck has. Uh, you could get away with doing the Astral Force into Zexal Lock thing, but the problem is is that even before the ban list hit, that combo required like every card in your hand to be done. Uh, like you needed to invest every card in your hand into it, and it like basically required you to draw the White or Black Dragons, whereas now you don't have access to those, so it's really hard for you to get all the way to the Zexal Lock. Whereas, uh, if you don't draw into Waterfront, it's still pretty common for you to put up Equimax with a Negate with a Crusadia Crawler, Dawn Dragster, and uh, Archfiend Abyss, which is still three Negates, um, but obviously you want to be getting to Waterfront instead, uh, which you do get to a significant portion of the time. But anyway, carrying on. One copy of Reinforcement of the Army. This searches your Crusadia Arborea. Uh, like, you may ask, why are you playing Rhoda instead of just playing a second copy of Leonis? Well, that's because Arborea is a superior card to Leonis, because Arborea being a tuner means that we can make Dawn Dragster if we don't draw into Waterfront. Your chances of seeing Arborea and not seeing Waterfront are really high. Like, we're not, like, really high in general. I mean, like, if you don't see Waterfront, your chances of seeing Arborea are still, like, high. They're just as good as the chances of you seeing Waterfront, so the chances of you not seeing either of them is pretty low overall. But then, copy of Monster Reborn... And then two more copies of Monster Reborn in the form of two copies of World Legacy Succession. Uh, like, this is a card I've thought about cutting down to one multiple times because it is a hard once per turn. Uh, but if you draw one, I want to be able to play it and then be able to use Crusadia Crawler to search a second one. If I'm summoning Crawler and not searching anything, I feel like I'm being, you know, cheated by myself. Especially since you don't end with as many cards in your hand in this version as you would have previously because of Black and White Dragon. Again, being at one copy each, that is a huge hindrance. And I wouldn't play a card like Crusadia Guard Dragon, or uh, not Crusadia Guard Dragon, uh, World Legacy Guard Dragon in place of this, because that only works with a few cards, whereas Succession helps facilitate the Azathot play that we're trying to do. Like, if you open Maximus plus a Familiar plus Succession, that is the Azathot play, because you go summon Maximus and link it into Magius, Succession the Maximus back as a level 4 monster, and then you're able to summon the familiar, make gnarly, make Azathoth. Whereas if you were playing Crusadia, or not Crusadia, World Legacy Guard Dragon in that slot, you wouldn't be able to do that. So, like, this has a little bit more reach in terms of what we're trying to do with the combo. But, that said, last three spells, three copies of Quick Launch. We are just trying to get to Dragon Extenders, uh, and this is a non-hard once per, this is a non-once per turn emergency teleport for Magna Rocket Dragon. We are only playing one target for it in the form of Magna Rocket Dragon. But, this is like, you just want to draw into it, because it's a dragon extender that doesn't take a normal summon. It's another level 4 monster, which means it facilitates and adds on to the, uh, the Nyarlia into Azathoth play. Uh, and it not being uh, once per turn is good, because usually your opponents might just ash this. If this is the first card you play, they'll think you're playing a terrible rocket deck and they'll ash it. And then you just like, have another one. You go, haha, you just play it. <laughs> so, sometimes it's just free like that. But, 40th card in the deck is the only trap. One copy of Crusadia Crawler. You search this mid-combo, uh, and you set it, you flip it, summon it under Equimax, turns Equimax into an Omni Negate for a face-up card, and then you get to search uh, World Legacy Succession to finish out that. Like, you get to use Succession as a uh, as a nice bit 
of additional pressure the next turn because you can succession for red med back which brings back saryuja or brings back pisty which then brings back saryuja so like succession casually like puts a lot of bodies on board but anyway for the extra deck uh, the Crusadia engine is uh, two copies of Magius, one copy of Spatha, one copy of Regulix, one copy of Equimax. These are the four Crusadias that are played. Regulix is the card that surges Crawler. Uh, playing two Magius because sometimes your boards can get like broken, and being able to go Magius into the succession you searched uh, is huge. Uh, but then also sometimes uh, your opponents will try to be cheeky uh, with your Azathot play, and like you haven't activated Magius yet, and they see you're about to go into Azathot. Uh, they Valor your Magius, and you're like, all right, make Azathot make Regulix, special a different Crusadia, Search Crawler, and then make the second Magius off the Regulix, and then special something, uh, and like still search with Magius. <laughs> so sometimes you can just get them with that as well. But uh, carrying on, the Guard Dragon Engine, LP, Pisty, and Agrapane, I've said many times, and I'll say it again, one of either LP or Agrapane needs to be banned. All three of these cards existing together is very much not okay. Uh, but any two of them together would be fine. These two together would be fine, and these two together would be fine, but all three of them, very unhealthy, because it allows decks like this to exist, which just only function to not let the game be played. Uh, a generic slot of Nightmare Phoenix. I've thought about playing Instant Fusion in the deck and turning this slot into a Dark Fire Dragon, but this comes up a little bit way too often. Uh, but then two copies of Saryuja Skulldread. This is necessary. You go into one, then you go into the second one. Uh, during the uh, different stages of the combo. Uh, you draw eight cards, try to dig for Waterfront, and then you special Gamma Seal off of your Saryuja. Uh, that's pretty standard. And then Azathoth and Yarla. So you're trying to summon Yarla every game, and then put Azathoth on top of it. Azathoth does not activate, so your opponent now just can't use Monster Effect. And you usually make Azathoth underneath your Crusadia Magius, and then you just get to use your Magius Search uh, uninterrupted, and the only hand trap your opponent can have is Infinite Impermanence. Uh, to even try to interact with you. So that that's really good, right? Uh, but then the two sinkers I play is Hot Red Dragon Archfiend Abyss for our aggro pain target because it's another Omni Negate. Uh, and FA Dawn Dragster is just a generic spell trap negator uh, that you only really summon when you aren't drawing into Waterfront because you need to end on Archfiend Abyss, Dawn Dragster, and Crusadia Equimax with your Surged Crawler set. So that's still, yeah, that's three negates. Uh, Big, beefy boys that are still hard to deal with, even with three cards. Uh, and then you have a Search Monster Reborn, which means your opponent has to respect that as well, because you have searched Succession. But, that is basically it for the main and extra. Side deck is incredibly generic, uh, but it's been working out very well. Uh, three copies of Droll and Lockbird, and three copies of Ash Blossom and Joy Spring. These are for, like, the combo decks, specifically Danger Thunder. Uh, Droll is good against, and Ash, I put in in that matchup as well. Uh, but Ash is good against Orcus as well because you hit the Mermaid. Uh, and then for back row uh, decks and decks like Striker and Salamangrate, I play three Denko because you can side Denko against Striker or Salamangrate because they always either leave an arrow pointing to your zone with Shizuku or with Sunlight Wolf, so you can normal summon Denko and then special your Crusadias to the zone they give you. It turns off all their back row. And then if your hand is good enough, you can go into the Azathoth play, so then you have them under Denko and Azathoth and you just kill them. Um, and then just more generic back row hate, three Twin Twister, and three red reboot. Uh, it's a very generic side deck. Uh, the theory is you decide in very powerful cards for whatever matchup you're playing. You don't want to be siding more than six cards at maximum. Uh, and you don't want to be siding cards. I'm not siding cards like Droll and Ash against Sky Striker because I would rather be siding in cards like Twin Twister and Ninko that actively like deal with cards like Mystic Mine. There can be only one. Uh, cards that you can slap down and deal with multiple back row. Uh, whereas if I Droll or Ash them, they could still play the rest of their turn out. Uh, in some form and I could still be dealing with disruption that's too hard for me to deal with um, in terms of like I'll just lose the game straight up but uh, basically like Dinko is nice and then Red Reboot comes in against Salad because you want to be able to hit their Rage and Roar and or Sanctum uh, whatever they're trying to do to you because Dweller doesn't hurt anymore because you don't have anything that resolves in the graveyard other than the one copy of Black Dragon and one copy of uh, white dragon like the one black and white and one white dragon are the only cards that dweller hits anymore so like they dweller you and you're like all right cool fine <laughs> sure <laughs> you can have that um but essentially that is the gist of the deck uh i always put a lot of theory into this deck uh, i would implore you to try this out before uh like actively just like criticizing it because some people have criticized this in the past and then they like come on like stream or something and play me with their versions of Crusadia. We play like a mirror match and they go first, open the nuts, 
and I'm able to summon Crusadia special two familiars without activating effects so that uh, Gamma Seal can't negate me and whatever, make as a thought and then just like outright win. <laughs> so like, there's a lot of good, good theory in this deck. I would definitely, definitely encourage you to try it out if you are interested. But otherwise, that's pretty much it for this video. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, leave them in the comments down below. But like I said before, if you're new here, consider subscribing and enabling that notification bell. I'd love to welcome you on board. I'd love to show you more stuff. If you've enjoyed the content, I would definitely, definitely love to see you subscribed. But if you have any questions, like I said, comment down below. If you like the deck profile, if you have any input, comment down below. If you want to join my Discord server and talk about this or other decks or other things, even outside of Yu-Gi-Oh! like anime and just general shit, my Discord server is in the link as well, and I live stream multiple times a week. Twitch link is in the description as well. If you want to go follow the live stream link, follow the Twitch page, not miss a stream, that would be awesome as well. But other than that, as always, guys, thanks for watching. Thanks for your time, as usual, and take care. I will see you in the next video.